Thanks for joining us on this slightly warmer Friday afternoon. A lot of melting going on out there. So if you're on the roads, please be safe. Be careful. There's a lot of water, but we're dry here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center for the 4 o'clock show, and we've got a packed lineup for you. We have some poetry, we have some faith, and we have some politics. So we're going to run the gamut here to kick off the weekend for you. So I'd like to now welcome my first guest into the studio, DeMont Holmes, as a Providence resident, Johnson & Wales graduate, poet, who is going to be holding a poetry reading tomorrow in Providence. DeMont, thank you for coming in today. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. I appreciate your coming in. I'm sure you've got a packed schedule getting ready for the poetry reading tomorrow. Yes, yes. You're a JWU grad in tech. <laughs> You're a tech guy and a poet. Yes. Tell us, you know, how this came to be. When did you really start getting involved with poetry? I started getting involved with um, poetry in, I want to say, high school. Really big time. I, at first, you know, I, uh, ironically, I have very horrible handwriting. <laughs> so um, I kept practicing my handwriting and eventually I just got good at it and then someone told me, he said, hey, DeMont, you're good at poetry. I said, oh, okay, let me put it online. <laughs> and I, when I first put it up online, you know, um, I used to get bad reviews. Like, why am I, why, why am I getting bad reviews for? So then I just kept going at it and kept improving and improving. And um, that's when I really started writing most of the poetry in my first book, my poem, my riddle. Okay. Um, and why is it, what's the title? What's the, tell us about the theme of it, your poem, your riddle. What's really at the core of this? So my poem, my riddle, is basically the extremes of love. Um, love, hate, relationship, all of that into one. Um, my first poem in it is called My Poem, My Riddle. And I, wanna, I wanted to challenge your mind on the variety of different topics concerning love. Okay. And so that's the first one. And talk with us, when was this written? Uh, during your college years, just after? Um, most of the poetry was written during, in, in the first book, during my college years. Prasmatic Dreams actually helped publish the book. Um, and Prasmatic Dreams is through Tribal Reign here in Providence. Fantastic. So I didn't publish anything until I got here to Providence with J. Wu. <laughs> and what brought you to J. Wu? You're from New York. You were looking around at colleges in tech. Talk with us about the other side of you, the the academic side who said, where am I looking to go to school? I wanted to go to Johns Williams University because I heard they had a tech program. It was um, away from New York at the time. I, I grew up in Southside Jamaica, Queens. Um, and I wanted to try as best as I could to get as far away from New York, but not be too far. <laughs> Providence <laughs> was the smallest place. It was small. I heard great things about it. Nothing wrong with it. So I said, Johns Williams University is a big name. Any, everyone is going to know about it. Mm. So why not go? <laughs> so you came, you wrote the poetry, and you stayed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Providence captured my heart. I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, ironically, I started really getting into poetry. I didn't even get into poetry when I was in Queens so much. But when I got to Providence, I went to a Blue State coffee house on Thayer Street every Tuesday. Mm. Uh, and that, they, they grew me. Can bring it a little bit closer over here. Oh, oh, step, step back and then just a little over closer. Thanks. <laughs> um, Blue State Coffee House. And then I went over to Cafe Soul on Dyke, uh, 62 Dyke Street in Oneville. Mm. And they grew as well. It's the poetry community that showed me so much love and support. It's about eight years now I've been performing here. Fantastic. And let's talk a little bit, because your next book is about orange. Yes. <laughs> so let's talk about the orange. You've got the orange shirt on. What is the meaning of the color orange to you, and why does it weave its way through your works? Oh, oh, hey. Hey, kind of orange. Yeah, kind of. Kind of <laughs> orange. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the color orange. At first, I was just wearing it just as a color, and then it became so much more as I started going to poetry. So I was like, hey, you're wearing orange, and it became a brand. Okay. And then it became a symbol of inspiration to me. People were questioning, them out, why do you wear orange? Why do you wear orange? Because when you look at orange, I want you to think of me. I want you to think of the color. I want you to think of my poetry. I want you to think of the brightness of life and love and happiness. Fantastic. Well, can we encourage you? Can you do a little reading while we have you here in studio? Of course. Now, um, can I stay here or would you prefer to have the studio all to yourself? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I okay, can stay. So, um, <laughs> I can stay. Yes, you can stay. Uh, the first one I'll actually perform to you then. Fantastic. Uh, it goes, trapped by the bars of my first high, I capture you in my sight, and my love for you expands as wide as your gaze in the sight in the sky. To atone for your beauty at first sight, I've imprisoned you within my eyes, and for the rest of your days you'll stay, and happiness will be your cellmate. I'll set you free one day, 
But that day is when my love for you dies. So enjoy it now before I say goodbye. Ah, nice <laughs> one there. And you've performed that before. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, that's just a sample um, for what's to come tomorrow. And you're going to be at Books on the Square on Angel Street at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Yes. Are you excited? Yes. I have my books in most of the bookstores in Providence. Seller Stories, Aiders, Johnson & Wells, Brown University. Providence has just showed me so much love. Books on the Square, um, I will be there tomorrow at 3 p.m. Um, it's very, very important that I s support local. Mm. It's so important to me because Providence has to grow within itself. Um, one of the organizations that I have helping me is Food for Good. It's a local food truck here. They will be supplying uh, the food for the event. And they donate a portion of the proceeds that they get to the local uh, less fortunate every month. Fantastic. Food for Good. You're very involved with the community from what I read up on and doing things to really bring the community together. And Orange Live. Talk with me a little bit about Orange Live. Um, Orange Live started as uh, it started actually on Federal Hill at uh, Cafe Pazzo. They, they gave me the opportunity to just bring together a, a wealth of community from Massachusetts to uh, Rhode Island to New York. It just, it just so many different talents. And then I took it down to a Bowery Poetry Club in New York City. I did the same annual poetry festival to try to bring more um, people together from the community and basically it just connects communities through art. Mm. A lot of organizations that I, I work with, they, they do that. Like the Naked Campaign in uh, Atlanta, uh, she, Deanna Liz, she does a mental awareness for rape victims. Uh, Blue Rose Foundation, another one here in Rhode Island. Love, Paint, and Chill is another organization uh, along the same fundamental guidelines where they're helping the community within and I just wanted to be a part of that and share that with the local community here and as I branch out I always try to bring artists from Rhode Island from Mass to my shows out there so they can get support and then they support me as well. And the community support, let's talk a little bit about that. Do you bounce ideas off of people? Do you run poetry by them and say check out this latest writing? I mean how influential has the community been here in your growth as a poet? Um, so, so, so much. Um, a lot of the poets that I'm around um, they inspire me, uh, Rick McIntyre, uh, they used to be Brothers Keeper, uh, you know, the Boston Poetry Slam team, AS220, The Spot, Lizard Lounge, like all these big places I've been to and they all constantly inspire me. I just go, I sit down, <laughs> they invite me to come and then they just do, the, they do what they love. And in return, I get to grow by watching them and I study them. They are my heroes. Local people are my heroes. Like, I'm not lying. I love celebrities. I've met a couple of them, but the local people in my community, I hail them as my heroes. So are you balancing writing poetry with work in the tech field? Yes. Uh, it's crazy. I, did, I, I love technology. I, I, just, I started out as problem solving, fixing computers, and that's really what I want to do. Um, then people are like, Problem, poetry is very similar to, to uh, problem solving and computers, ironically. You know, you gotta fit the words in the right way. You gotta do research on a topic if you don't know. You always have to grow, and poetry is always growing. It's always expanding exactly like computers. Every two years, something is new. <laughs> so it's very difficult to keep up with. <laughs> but it's constantly reinventing, and I just gotta figure, your brain's firing on all cylinders between the left <laughs> side, the right side, the front side, the back side. So you've got the two books published. You're going to be at Books on the Square tomorrow. 2018 is just kicking off. What does the year hold ahead for you in the poetry realm? Um, in the poetry realm, I'll be doing a couple of org uh, I'm working with, or I'm attempting to work with a couple of different organizations in the community uh, to support local charities, such as there's one organization that I was invited to join, uh, not join, but perform with or do a poem for on the, um, for a sponsorship at, a, at a, one of the local colleges. Another one is for Haiti. They're having this performing, I think, at Twin River, soon coming up. Oh, and fantastic. That, yes, and then this, this one on, and a couple of days after my book signing, um, it's called The Living, I think it's called The Living Room by uh, Helen Dukes. She'll be uh, doing, uh, she allowed me to come on the show and be able to perform one of my poems, which is brand new, 
I have not read it or seen anyone oh. else like it yet. Uh, <laughs> it's about single dads. Ah, uh, aha. So you're going to be unveiling that there. Yes. Is there, is there a little difference between the, the, the written word on paper and delivering it in front of an audience? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, it, it's, it's so different. In, in fact, one of, a lot of my poetry, um, there's 52 different types of written poetry. And I had to study this, and I learned that in uh, performance poetry, poetry slam, is completely, it's its, its own separate mm. uh, form versus written. You can write a poem, and it's not necessarily good to read it. Mm, sure. You would understand a lot more if you had time to study and digest it. You can't really study and digest a performance unless it's recorded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, some of the greats, like... Uh, some of the greats that you see out Shakespeare, his is performed greatly, but it has to be studied. Yes. You have to understand <laughs> Shakespeare, Maya Angelou, all, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, all these great poets out there, uh, Nico Giovanni, you have to study their work. And you can't study it. There's not a lot of performances out there of them. <laughs> no. But you study it on paper first, and as you study on paper, you begin to grow as a performer. Now, actors are some of the best performers. Um, my, my wife and son, I love them. Shout out to them. Uh, my family, I love you guys. Oh, I'll give them a the shout out till you're in studio here. So we're going to be looking to you for more poetry moving forward. But again, 3 o'clock tomorrow if you want to hear the poetry in action. It's going to be at Books on the Square on Angel Street at 3 o'clock. Looks like it might be a fun little pregame activity if you're looking for something to do on Saturday. But again, I just want to let folks know the books here by DeMont, the touch of orange, but the first one, my poem, my riddle. I appreciate your taking the time to come in today, and I look forward to having you here back again in the future. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. I hope to see you guys. This one's 15, and only at the book signing will this be 20. Uh, this was published by uh, Pratt, uh, Kingdom Enterprise, and the artwork inside was done by Shana Soares, a local in Providence. Fantastic. Well, we love to have local. We're all about local. So, Damont, I appreciate you taking the time to come in today. I'll let you go around the corner. Right, okay, thank thanks, Damont. Damont Combs, local poet, originally from New York, came up to Johnson & Wales, got a degree in technology, but has been moving forward in the poetry field, talking about the poetry community here and why he decided to stay after college, publishing a couple of books, having a poetry reading tomorrow on the east side. We'll have that information up for you on our site. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with our next guest here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center.